Yes, this is the Mark Haney Show on a mission to ignite the entrepreneurial revolution right here in the hometown we love. And today we have Christina Dyer. She is building an incredible, incredibly unique company. She's adding adventure, fun, uh, excitement, and travel into the entrepreneurial experience. She's taking entrepreneurs and other successful people that want to get away and go learn in a different way um, by adding some fun and while simultaneously giving back, simultaneously uh, providing service. And so stick around. I think you're going to really appreciate what Christina is doing. And you might even think, you know what, maybe I should be thinking about uh, service to my, to this world as well. So stick around, hear the story of Christina Dyer. You know, today's show is going to be fun because we're going to be talking about leadership. We're going to be talking about personal growth. It's something that I am passionate about. I, I think we all want to, uh, to become better, no matter how well we're doing. Uh, you know, we want to be better. We want to build better teams. We want to be better ourselves. And so today, I have rounded up a treat for all of us. I have Christina Dyer. She is, uh, she actually was referred to me by our good buddy, her nanny Alves. And uh, she's going to share a little bit about her business, which is called, uh, what is the name of your business? Anyway, <laughs> it's, I know it's got Noble, is it Noble Adventures? Noble Adventures. Noble Adventures. I, I know you're more than Noble Adventures, yeah. but you launched this Noble Adventure. So we're going to talk about that. But uh, why don't we just get a little bit of your background okay. to start off with? Wow. And you know, that's always the first question. I always plan for it, but then I'm never ready for it. Like, What's the best way to share about you? The best way, yeah. yeah. So uh, my education and training, I'm um, a licensed clinical professional counselor. Um, So I started out in psychotherapy, and then I became a Department of Children and Family Services child protection social worker in Los Angeles, which means I went in and took kids away from people. Yikes. Yeah. So, um, that the, the kind of helping people and helping people grow and develop and change has always been my business, but, um, child protection forced a lot of burnout on me. Right. Mm. So, um, actually what, what I did, my husband and I backpacked around the world for a year for our honeymoon. So he said, where do you want to go for a honeymoon? And I said, I want to ditch everything i want to quit my job sell my car leave this who place. does that yeah. and then he said okay he let's went with do you it. he said yeah. yes oh that's yeah awesome. so we both quit our jobs and we backpacked around the world for a year and so that kind of really opened my eyes to the globe well when i came back i decided i don't want to go back into the helping profession where I'm kind of trying to lift people up to like normal. I, that's a bad word, but I wanted to really, um, meet people where they are, were and help them grow. So Mm -hmm. I decided to go take all my skills and talents and go into executive coaching. And so that's where I've landed since that time. And so, you know, and for today's show, let's, let's think about as we, as we help our audience, these are for Let's gear the conversation not for the people that are at rock bottom at the moment. Maybe it's for the people that are, look, maybe uh, I'm a little complacent, but I want to grow. I have, I want to be, I'm doing okay, but I know I can do better. And uh, so maybe, maybe today serves as a a kick in the butt, maybe a a, a little bit of a um, uh, uh, eye-opening moment and, uh, and maybe a slight shift in the way we are approaching our journey, because mm-hmm. um, we are all kind of we all have different dreams, and so. But I, I but I think um, maybe well, let's speak to that a little bit. So you, um, who are you helping now predominantly? So right now, um, I'm helping successful leaders get better with their teams. Okay. However. The thing that is important as a leader or as just an everyday person, right, is self-awareness, right? And that's where people that are doing okay, but they want to improve, they want to figure out how to master themselves. So I came from a background of therapy where we kind of go back and dig around and figure out what's going on, right? But as a therapist, you go where they lead you. But as a coach, 
I get to set a goal, set a destination, set a plan, set a vision, give homework, be more interactive with people so they can come to me and and talk about what is stopping them. Because I'm a former therapist, I can go back and kind of try to heal some of those things that are that are keeping them stuck. But as a coach, I get to move move them forward with an end in sight, with goals in sight. It's a very often measurable and um, there's not as much stigma around coaching as there is around therapy, so we are able to bring in stakeholders. So all those people in that person's life that will be impacted by their change. So that's one of the things that I love about coaching is it's not, um, you know, when you have an aha moment and you're on your own by yourself, it's just in your head. Unless you make it evident, unless you act behaviorally on that, people around you don't recognize the change. Right. Okay. Right. So when you're coaching leaders, it's not really about them feeling like they're changing. All the stakeholders around them have to say, yes, I recognize that change. And so there's a measurable, discernible improvement because the reality is if they aren't changing for the people around them, they haven't changed. Do you feel like um, people are reluctant? These leaders, they've had success that maybe there's a certain level of reluctance to, oh, I need a coach or I need help. And, oh, no, now we're going to put other people in my life in this, Mm -hmm. you know, in this program uh, or in this, uh, you know, opportunity for growth. Um, It's embarrassing. And I maybe even um, don't want to admit that you need it. Right. Absolutely. One hundred percent. And it's a very vulnerable place to be. Right. And leaders think they need to have all the answers. Right. And so and very often they do know a lot. And so they want to meet somebody where they are at and have not as much of a coach, but maybe a trusted advisor, Mm. someone that can look to them, see all the stuff that's going on in their life and be able to um, help them gain more awareness, maybe confront them when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but in a gentle, supportive, confidential way. And so there's... um, there's a, I, I can't stress enough how vulnerable it is as a leader to go in and say, I need help. But that's where the word noble comes in with my company, mm-hmm. because I do believe that it's noble for people with that have the um, opportunity to impact, which is kind of what I consider a leader, that they say, I'm not the best I can be and I need some help. Yeah. And then they step out because they expect everyone else to get help when they need yeah. it, but they need to get the help too. Maybe we have a moral obligation mm-hmm. to be our best yeah. when we're trying to make an impact. And that's where the nobility lies. I mm-hmm. think it's noble. If you think about what kings would do for their kingdoms, where that word comes from, it's noble for them to say, I want to be the best I can be so that I can be present um, be purposeful and take care of and support all the people around me. So you said one of the first things you need to do, maybe the the first thing is have some self-awareness, know Mm -hmm. who you are. Um, What does that look like? Are you looking for like strengths and weaknesses, big dreams? Um, Like what, when we get self-aware, what, what happens? So yes, strengths and weaknesses. Um, And I don't really call them weaknesses as much as areas to develop, right? And it's not just a pretty word. It's different. Um, But also, what are their values, right? Because Mm -hmm. that that kind of uh, reflects back to who they are as a person. That's their principles. And very often, it takes you back to what you were raised with, right? So you get to go back and say, I value this. Now, why do I value this? And do I need it anymore? Maybe it was a defense mechanism. I don't need it anymore. I can move on. So it's your values. It's your triggers. I think mm. that's a big thing for leaders to be self-aware, to know what are their triggers, because then that's when the weaknesses come out, right? The areas okay. to develop come out. Something that might trigger you to um, do something you wouldn't want to do is that what you mean um to be extremely irritated over and over and over again like sometimes employees will be like i I know he just doesn't like me every time i say this or this or this and he might be she or he might be doing something that is triggering that leader from somewhere else and if they aren't aware of it they just don't like that person right or they get stuck with that person so there's a lot of different things as a leader um I'm trying to think of another example. Um, 
because you know when you talk about strength and weaknesses you can also do like that SWAT right mm -hmm. and you can do it on yourself but this is a little bit deeper like where do you come from one of the things that I like to do is this lifeline exercise where you talk about your scars and your stars right so your highs and lows of your life mm -hmm. and then look to that and find out what value was created what principle for my living was created or what uh, defense mechanism was created and what do I want to do moving forward. Do you typically do that one-on-one -on -one or in a group, that lifeline exercise? Um, so fascinating, I do it both. Um, on a noble adventure, we do it in a group experience. How often do people cry during that? Um, I've been in those exercises say, before and typically when people are talking about the, the highs and lows of their life over the course of time, it can be quite emotional mm -hmm. because you're really digging into things that if you're being totally transparent, you're digging into things that you don't talk about very much. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, it, it depends on how much work that person has done on themselves. Mm -hmm. I can go back and talk about things that are hard for me and not cry because I've done the work. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like if it's a brand, if it's a wound and it's scabbed, you know, and you're rubbing it, it's going to hurt. So you're going to cry more often. You know, it just, it, it depends on what track I've been in the social work therapy field. This is what we do. This is yeah. what we talk You're about. You're used to seeing people uh, yeah. become vulnerable. Very easily, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I'm very comfortable with that too. And so it, it, my, my husband always says, people just tell you things and they do. And it's just, I think it's because I'm very open. I'm very, I have very little judgment, you know, people, folks are folks. That's pretty much what I learned in social work. Folks are folks. So, um, and I think that people are surprised when the tears pop up. They're always mm -hmm. like, wow, I can't, what I, happened? I can't believe I'm doing That's this. That's what you know? always happens to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And I, I love watching when Oprah gets tears in her eyes, you know, she's been through everything and had so much and she still will like, oh my God, I'm crying over this, you yeah. know, okay kind of just you know whatever hits that person at that time yeah. but it, it always has to be okay and so we set the parameters for that that this is all okay and it's a safe place so when you so you let's say somebody comes to grips with who they are um and has some self-awareness are there other like steps that happen along uh the the growth process it absolutely depends on their goals okay right so everything that we do is customized to where they want to get to there might be ahas and new learning along the way and all that, but we want to stay focused on what their goals are to mm -hmm. achieve, you know. So, um, yeah, so it depends on their goals. Do you feel like people, this is kind of an interesting thing for me because I spend uh, time helping entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, and small business people and, uh, and then, you know, I have friends that are UPS drivers and, you know, regular uh, workers, if you will. Um it's interesting to me that some people just dream a little bit bigger for themselves. They, mm -hmm. they imagine themselves creating something um, that most of society would say is uh, huge, big. Um, and then other people tend to just want the basics. I just want to have a job mm -hmm. and get paid and hopefully retire and, you know, why are some people like dreaming so big and others seem to be limiting themselves, at least in my mind? Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, I heard one time and it has stuck with me forever. The world is an ocean. You can go to it, go to it with a bucket or a thimble. The choice is yours. Yeah. And depending on what you want to take from it. I like that. And I love that because it just makes me, you know, when someone is super uber successful, I always just say the world's an ocean. It's there for me too. If I just do whatever, yeah. success leaves clues. Right? And you be you. I mean, if you, you have, you. If, if your goal is to re retire with the gold watch at 55 and you can do that, knock yourself out. That's if you right. want to keep chasing it, uh, you know, to become the next, I don't know, Bill Gates or whatever, right. knock yourself out. It's like right. you be you. Well, what breaks my heart, though, is when someone is a big thinker and big dreamer, but they're trapped in their small world out of fear ah. or out of things that were put upon them or ideas that they adopted that they just need a little bit of shepherding 
to break free from that, right? That's kind of like the caterpillar and the chrysalis, you know? They have to beat against it a little bit to get out and spread its wings and grow. And sometimes I think people are afraid to do that. And that's where, I don't know if I'm intuitive or what, but I can sometimes see that in people. Mm -hmm. And that's where I like to shepherd and hold space and support people through that process so that they can live up to their potential. If I they bet we all have that at some level. I, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe not all, but I mean, I feel like I have that at some times. I look at myself and I go, what are you worried about? Just go. Just go. Just do it. Just do yeah. it. Just say yes. I'm a worrier. I, but yeah. uh, I, some people think I'm, uh, you know, really ambitious, but I spend a lot of time worrying about mm-hmm. stuff. Um, it's, it's my, it's like part of my friend here. It's like my big dream and my worry. And I just try to like work through it. And that's a, a skill right there, right? You've got them both on your shoulder and you kind of just, I'm the big guy. I'm yeah. taking you both with me and <laughs> yep. we'll see what happens. But has anything ever horrible happened? No, not because I not, you know, you take a little bit of risk and you, that's right. sometimes you make mistakes, yeah. but they're always learning uh, opportunities. Yeah. They're not ever that painful. And sometimes the mistakes are what take us to the next place, right? And I, I've been lucky because I don't, I'm not the type of person that has regret, regrets mm-hmm. about things. I will be the type of person that laughs at myself mm-hmm. for all the failure that I've had. Mm-hmm. Um, but for some reason, it's like I end up, it wasn't that painful when I fail, I guess. Right. Or, uh, right. you know, I pick myself back up and laugh and go. It's funny you were saying, I co-authored a, a book on leadership strategies for women. And I said to my older sister, I said, hey, have you gotten a copy of the book? <laughs> Can I give it to you? And she goes, I'll read it, but I don't want to lead. I'm sorry. I just want someone to tell me what to do. I want to go to work. I want to punch my clock. I want to go home. And I was stunned. I just, I thought, wow, how can you not want to lead? You know? And and so it's just completely different people raised in the same home. She just didn't want to. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I think at some level, uh, you know, the UBU is, Mm -hmm. has to take over, but I mean, we have to be the CEO of our own life. We have every one of us, even someone who doesn't want to become a leader wants to become something. Yes. I hope. And that was funny because that was the chapter of the book is lead where you are, lead every day, everyday leadership. Because I think people all over the world are leading in their own way. And I, one of the stories from that book, I was in um, Tanzania And I was doing a service project and, well, trying to create a service for these women. And um, I was in a Muslim village and the men sat on the concrete under the shade and the women sat under a tree. And the men were drawing me in because I was bringing money to the village Mm -hmm. and talking to me and, and, um, for lack of a better word, kind of romancing me to, to see their point of view. And one woman came over and said, the women would like to speak with you. Mm. And so through a translator, they said, don't give the money to the men because the men are going to drink it away and (laughs) buy other women. Right. So um, I said, oh, okay." Like I was like this whole new perspective came upon me and I said, "Okay, I'll help. And they all started all you late, you know, all lighting. Oh God, yeah. I've never seen that. And so the one woman took me aside and she said, you come with me. And she took me into this like little hut and she had me sign a document. And she said, my name is BB Jeku. I am the leader. And I said, okay. She was about four foot 10 hmm. little old woman. And she was strong, powerful. When she spoke, everybody else quieted. When she ovulated, everybody else did as well. That's where I kind of, learned you can be a leader every day anywhere you are in the world because if you saw her walking down the street you would never recognize her power but she knew her power it was fascinating that's very interesting yeah. um well so if you if you get become self-aware you mm. uh you have a big uh, you have a goal um you, you face your fears um is there is there other other things along the process that uh, that that you sort of go through that are kind well, of that's is, never is, really is, done, is, right? I mean, you're never really fully self aware, ah, and you're never fully done. That's a good point. You're still worrying. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you got me. I got you. You're very successful, right? And there's still those worries. We're yeah. never done, right? Yeah. So rinse and repeat. I always think to myself, okay, what is this challenge situation trying to teach me? Like I'm not mm-hmm. done yet, right? Or I wouldn't be here anymore. So I'm I'm needing to learn something, and it's hard. It's hard to learn those things, especially as a parent, right? What is this kid and his struggles trying mm-hmm. to teach me? Because I do believe our kids are our best teachers in a lot of ways. You know, we can teach, but really they're teaching us about ourselves very often. And, um, and that's where I look for opportunities for my own growth. It's not always pretty, but, you know, it's yeah. there. But, yeah, so I think that... Um, so there's something called Barrett Values. I'm a Barrett Values certified assessor. And it's kind of like uh, based on Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay. So once we get to his top phase, then Is we... that self-actualization? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that class. I've taken that class a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then we start to go into more of it with Barrett values. You look at how willing are you to, um, where are you transforming as a person? Then where are you learning to collaborate? And then where are you learning to give back? So the highest, there's seven levels for Barrett values. And the highest is, uh, that social impact that giving back to the world, what you're doing would be level seven in your service to others and trying to grow communities and grow entrepreneurs. It's no longer about you, but it's about the whole ecosystem that we're all living in. Well, it's interesting because I, as we talked about your business earlier, um, I'm quite intrigued by this. Maybe, maybe I'll have you share your business model because it's really unique. And then maybe because service is a part of Mm -hmm. that giving back is a part of uh, what you bring out in your um, in your little teams, mm-hmm. um, and so I, if you don't mind, just share the business, and and I think people will be intrigued that this exists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really are unique. Um, so Noble Adventures is a leadership development company, but we do the leadership development through service projects in developing countries that have impact. Um, the idea came to me when I was working in Rwanda uh, in a service project and I was with, there was a, um, a senior leader from Caterpillar there on the trip with me. And we started talking about, um, our impact going to this village. And he was telling me about how it would be so uncomfortable for a lot of people in his corporate world to be doing this trip. Cause it was rough. It was a tough trip. I mean, Africa's not for the faint hearted. It's, you know, it's dirty, it's bumpy, it's all that. Um, and so we started talking about what a fantastic learning container this could be because it triggers so many things inside you, discomfort, frustration, annoyance, all those things where if you're comfortable and safe and everybody does what you say, you're never really challenged. You never really get your rough edges out. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's really where the seed was planted all the way back in 2006. But uh, it took a long time to come to fruition because I told myself all the reasons that it would never work. And um, here I am, however many le- years later, uh-huh. 17. Well, the business, later. though, it, uh, it's something where a group gets together and right. goes to some place and right. accomplishes something. Yeah. Um, Tell, talk to us about that group dynamic. How, yeah. how important is that piece uh, of the of the puzzle I, of the yeah of the pu- you know, of the growth puzzle? Yeah, so that's key. So everybody um, gets together, and so what it is is leadership development through service projects. So we find I have a service project set up, like the last one we did, we did in Mexico, and then the adventure piece is also key. That those are the three pillars: so personal and professional development impact through service projects, and fun and adventure. And the fun and adventure piece is fun and adventure, but it's also the glue. It's kind of that glue that makes the group cohesive, right? So um, it's fascinating watching the group dynamics because one-on-one, we may focus on you, but when somebody else talks about something, you might have a life experience that could help them 
that could trigger something else in them that brings something up that they might not have known about. So there's a lot going on during a noble adventure as a leader. You know, you're, you're focusing on the content development, you're um, facilitating and supporting individual transformational growth, and then you're also managing all the group dynamics at the same time. How many people would be on an average size group? We like 15. 15, mm-hmm. which is, to me, it seems like a number that lends itself to small groups. Like you mm-hmm. might break up within yeah. those groups because 15, if we all sat around and talked to each other, we wouldn't, we'd be doing a lot of listening. Right. Uh, and let, there's always somebody in the group that, I don't know if you have that. You probably have had that. Somebody yeah. in the group that there's can't keep someone. quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so walk me through, would you mind just walk me through what, let's say, is it a week uh, program? Yeah, it's a week. So the first thing we do is that lifeline exercise. That's okay. kind of, it wasn't, you know, you know, you have to do an icebreaker for everybody because these people don't know each other. So we do a couple of different Zoom calls together and get to meet each other leading up to the trip about at six months and three months. Are these people that would consider themselves peers or could it be a mixture of uh, some 22-year-old guy that just graduated and the Caterpillar exec? Mm-hmm. Or, is they, or do you try to create something where they're similar or they're different? So the, one of our goals is to have an intact team, an intact corporate team, and it would be very customized to whatever it is they are wanting to work on. Okay. So let's say they're moving into um, a, creating a new brand or going, um, going to multinational. Um, we would want to challenge their global mindset, those kinds of things. So everything is completely customizable down to the country oh. that they want to go to. Okay. Um, so I'm a Rotarian as well, and we have service projects all over the world. So I'm able to find service projects relatively easily. Okay. Um, and then the groups that we've had so far have been maybe one or two people know each other. They brought a friend, um, but they've really not been an intact team. And so it's been very, very interest- interesting. Um, we do vet the people to go. We don't want somebody, um, for lack of a better word, I guess, that has a lot of deep issues that we won't be able to support Mm -hmm. there. You know, um, someone that takes away from the experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or someone who might not be able to cope with things and might, um, issues might escalate. And I can... Yeah, I can see that. What about that? physical uh, mm-hmm. attributes? If you're doing rugged stuff, um, do you need to have to be physically uh, capable of doing things? No, not at the point okay. that we're at right now. Um, our project in Mexico was um, we transformed a senior citizen center by painting. We interviewed the seniors, and they told us what their dreams were and their best memories and that. And we had a, we hired a Mexican artist to draw us a mural that cast all their dreams and memories on the wall. And then they did a paint by number for us oh, nice. and then we painted it and it was unbelievable what, what came about with that. And so the people that didn't want to climb the ladder and go up to the top didn't. And those that did, did. So, you know, we're pretty good about that, making sure that everybody is um, able to participate in the service projects. Yeah. Okay, so you come in and you get to know each mm-hmm. other through a lifeline and some other mm-hmm. things and the Zoom calls uh, mm-hmm. at the beginning. And then what can we expect to happen yeah. um, throughout this? So um, I have done a values assessment before the trip as well. And so I have spoken to each individual person as a coach and said, okay, what it is it is it that you are hoping for? What are the goals? What do you want to work on personally? And then I kind of know that going into the group. And then they bring it forward and say, one of the things that I'm trying to work on this week. So we're, we're intentional. So the, we usually start with some kind of movement in the morning, maybe yoga. Some, we had a yoga instructor every morning in Mexico um, on this last one. And uh, then we do centering exercises to kind of bring everybody's intentions and focuses into the group. Um, some gratitude exercises, and then we start. So... We focus on values. We focus on what are our triggers. And this is all based on that lifeline exercise, right? So we can say, okay, this triggers you. Maybe it has to do with this. So we're all working together on all of this, Mm. right? We eat a lot. We have great food. And then we go to the service project. Um, Now, if you're a leader and you want to experience what it's like to follow, you don't get to lead. You have to follow. 
And if you're a follower, we give you some jobs to step up and make you lead, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do, and also through excursions. So um, we hired horses. We got a guy that brought 10 horses to us, and we took a horseback riding trip up to a water volcano. And we got all the way to the top of the water volcano, hiked down. It's kind of like a crater, Mm -hmm. but they said it was an active water volcano, so it kind of lended to the thrill of it all. Yeah, yeah, scariness. (laughs) But um, I had no idea, and I knew this person, so we all just decided to jump in the lake that wasn't really planned. We just jumped in, and we're swimming around this lake. It was so much fun, and she was standing on the edge, and she was, you could see she was terrified, Mm. and I knew she had been a lifeguard. It wasn't that issue, and then when she finally jumped in, she came back out of the water and just screamed, yes, 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 and started crying. And said she hadn't been swimming in a long time because of something that happened when she was lifeguarding. And this has been terrifying her, especially because she couldn't see the bottom. Like she can do a pool, Mm -hmm. but she couldn't do something where she couldn't see the bottom. Wow. Which was an interesting perspective. And um, she did it and cried and cried and cried. And just that personal victory was so amazing. So that's what I love is that. You know, how often do you get to ride a horse up to a water volcano and Mm -hmm. jump in and, you know. A once in a lifetime kind of experience while you're, so you're growing in Mm -hmm. that way Mm -hmm. while you're going through something that might be um, more custom tailored in terms of leadership development and that kind of thing. So you're kind of getting what we all think of as practical growth, uh, yet you're going to have these uh, uncommon growth opportunities to Mm -hmm. experience. One of the guys was a big guy, and um, he got the biggest horse because he was a big guy. And so he got it. He was quiet, right? The horse walked out. He was quiet. He jumped on it. And so the, um, I want to say caballero, but the the trainer guy said to him, you must be careful. This is an ornery horse. Oh. And he was, oh my God, this horse was nipping other horses. He was, you know, this guy, this was the first time on a horse for this man. So that's oh why he was being quiet because he was a little scared, Yeah. but he didn't want to say anything. And he gets on this horse. And by the time the day was done, he and that horse were like mano y mano. They ah. were good. And I, that was another personal victory for him. Yeah. To overcome the fear of something like mm-hmm. horse riding a horse, which I sort of have that too. I've yeah. spent a lot of time with horses. Wow. They're such powerful beings you know there's like a a respect for him in that but yeah he did it and that's what i love about it the the noble noble adventure is that travel offers those kinds of opportunities Mm -hmm. and going to a unique place where you're out of your comfort zone yeah do people sort of shut off the like you go to something like that you've you've obviously paid some money Mm -hmm. it's a commitment time and and money do people shut off the cell phones and shut off the rest of their life for a week mm-hmm. or do they try to still run their life? I never said no phones, nothing like that. And there's Wi-Fi service pretty much everywhere. Um, but everybody, I there were no phones out. I think they left them yeah. in their rooms. and Yeah. People are committed to the, the committed. journey. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. That's great. And so, yeah, people that have these routines, oh, I like to get up and work out. I like mm-hmm. to do all this stuff. It's like, wow, mm-hmm. I'm kind of going cold turkey into another environment yeah. where um, I can't control some of the things I'm used to. Right. And that's probably a good learning experience. It is. And and one of the women was a very active, um, she ran every morning for five miles and stuff. And so she was very concerned about her workout in the morning. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we said, well, there will be yoga and we will hire somebody or get somebody to take you around and show you where you can run. So she was able to do it, but she didn't feel the need because we were so active okay. at that point. So oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so are there any, uh, those are great success stories. Are there mm-hmm. any things that, um, uh, like, what do you want to do with the company? It sounds like the company uh, wants to get more corporate type clients. Is that, is that yeah. weird? Yeah, well, okay. So the reason, yes, and... The reason for that is um, I've been in some pretty horrible work environments before, and I always thought, man, if this leader could understand the capacity they have to really impact the lives of all 15 of us on this team and made it a good experience, it could really change the world in one family at a time, one person at a time, and then also through my years in social work, right? That's 
that is one of the biggest indicators of child abuse is um, unemployment and it's or underemployment and it's because the parents don't feel like they can give their child what they want to give and they get angry and so and they I don't take mean, it out on the kid well, oh yeah but at the same time I will say most child abuse that I saw wasn't physical abuse it was more neglect mm. right okay um, I didn't see it ton of people just beating on kids right there were those cases but most of it was neglect well yeah so th- let's talk about this for a second i want to i'm going to jump into the um to the corp i'm picturing a, a corporate person one of the big challenges that we have in corporations today and in businesses today is having uh, a team that is committed and will run through a brick wall together and mm-hmm. and you know row together in the same direction and You know, we have instead today, all employers virtually are facing this. um, Some people are calling it the great resignation, but it's tough to get good committed workers. Just society today. Mm -hmm. People feel more like free agents today than than they used to. But yet we we need to have uh, the skills to establish great teams if we want to be successful in, uh, in building our businesses. Um, and so I have to imagine that I look at it as everything's a leadership issue. So mm-hmm. whether it be the top person or the other people in the company, everything's a leadership issue and we can blame employees for the, um, not having the right mindset. Well, you know what? It, running a business is about leadership. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so I consult with a company called Sweetbrush. And we are 100% virtual company since 2004. It's not been because of COVID or anything like that. So there's, I think, 250 employees all over the globe. And so that allows Sweet Rush to hire the best employees, no matter what the boundaries are. And we are such a tight team. Hmm. And I haven't met, I've only met three of the 250 employees. And I'll tell you what, it is leadership. It's leadership because they embrace the entrepreneurial spirit, the free agent spirit of each one of these individual people. And they say, you are an adult. Here's what your timeline is. Here's what your project is. We expect you to do it. We all know we're working from home. There's, we all are on camera with each other and our kids are walking in the back or the cat jumps on the lap and everyone's just, you know, it's just keeps flowing. And it's, it's this refreshing, wonderful way of work that um, I see a paradigm shift in our world that is shifting towards that. So I think um, there's a lot of leaders that aren't necessarily afraid of it. They just don't know what to do about today. But I think that their employees have the answers. Like, ask your employee. Give them a voice. Listen to what they say. Pivot and do something new with your team. Interesting, because I... You said you don't know if there, are, if it's fear that is stopping them. I, I can tell you from my own experience that when I overcame my fear about communicating a vision mm-hmm. um, and uh, and really my my fear of leading, actually, mm-hmm. uh, when I began to overcome that, it was game changing for our mm-hmm. business. Um, and it sounds so silly. Oh, you're the owner of the company, or you're you know you're the CEO. What would you be afraid of? But I think there's a lot of us. They really do have insecurities about um, over communicating the vision, you know, asking people what they think. It's it's a it's the inability or in the the decision not to communicate, whether it be fear uh, or procrastination or laziness or some other thing. But we don't communicate well enough, so there's not organizational clarity. Um, like what you have in your 250 person mm-hmm. entity, mm-hmm. um, right? It's to me, this fear of communicating is rampant out there. Mm-hmm. And people don't know how to communicate clearly. And so their messaging gets skewed or, um, maybe they haven't set it up where they're not uh, aware of what the culture is that they're speaking to and so they say something and it's totally tone deaf mm. to they're, what the they're managing people, from the ivory tower or what have yeah, you yeah you know but i think one of the the smartest things i ever learned as a therapist in training was when you don't know what to say 
the best thing to do is say, I don't know what to say to that. And just let it sit. And then comment on it. I'm not sure the direction to go, but I'll get you there, right? But we'll get there together. Because that that shows that there's respect, there's trust, and there's skin in the game. If there's somebody in the crowd that says, oh my God, he doesn't know what he's doing, blah, 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 then they might not be the best fit for the organization, Mm -hmm. right? And sometimes um, knowing that through coaching, like getting coaching, team group coaching, that kind of thing, speeds that process up so you don't waste any more time with those kinds of people that aren't going to fit well with the organization. There was a um, person on our last trip, before the end of the trip, stopped drinking, quit his job, asked his (laughs) person to marry him, got home, he's now moved to another state, he's married, he's living somewhere else, and he's sober. And I say to him all the time, my God, this is just mind-blowing, this, and it all he needed was permission to do it. Wow. And um, That's amazing. As a leader whose person this, this person quit on, right, they might not think that was a real successful trip, but at the same time, they didn't invest any more time or energy into that person who yeah. was going to leave. They mm-hmm. were unhappy. So I think the best managers and leaders, CEOs, they want what's best for their teammates. Yes. I mean, they really do deep down. So if you're trying to control, it's... Uh, yeah. It's less effective. I mean, it's it doesn't even seem right. I mean, to me, if we can overline what Scott wants with what I want, then we have a good scenario. So why don't we find those alignments if we can? Um, to me, that's not that I've always done that, Scott. I got Scott's my AV guy over the side. He's like, you never talk to me. Um, but, uh, but I do think that that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about one of the things that uh, I've, I wonder, um, you, you deal with this, uh, you know, in, in the broader terms and in more, with more specifics, but it feels like we have these crises, crises that keep cropping up. I mean, we had COVID, mm-hmm. um, now we have the stress of what's going on in the geopolitical world. I mean, we had, um, you know, we've had all kinds of, it just feels like the world has a lot of crises in it. And in mm-hmm. in some ways that creates, um, insecurities just we walk around with a little more a little more on edge i think um or maybe with a little bit more uh uncertainty about what to expect uh in life um and so we take that to work with us right um so thinking about that or is there advice that you give or are there experiences that we might want to be thinking about having that could help us just dealing with this fact that not only are we on edge as leaders, but our teammates might be a little bit more on edge as well because, I don't know, you, you can't turn on the news. And I basically quit turning on the news during COVID right. because, you know, it was a waste. Of, it, it, it wasn't helping me. No. The, no. the information wasn't helping. Yeah. Have you heard the expression VUCA? No. That we live in a VUCA world now? I haven't heard that. Oh, volatile, uncertain, chaotic, and ambiguous. Uh, and so there's a lot of um, leaders who are saying in order to lead in this VUCA it's society that we're in, one of the things that comes to mind is more of that communication, right? Opening the doors to letting people be who they are and express those fears. It's um, the, the term psychological safety mm. where you are okay to speak up. You feel okay to take a risk. You feel okay to to throw out an idea that may seem crazy, but you know at the end there's the opportunity, and that's that breeds innovation, right? So creating that safe space for people to feel that no idea is a bad idea, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to hold space for it and allow it to be that helps people calm down in their workplace. They know they're going to a place that's supportive, it takes a little bit longer, but, um, you know, there's the saying, you got to go slow to go fast. Mm-hmm. You got to slow down, be present, hold space for people, get every, let everybody get their breath and then examine where they all are. You know, you'll also see somebody that might be on an edge that you may not have known about. And then you can attend to that person privately, but 
as far as a group is concerned, I think people just want to be heard. They want their fears and concerns expressed. We have a lot going on in our home lives now with kids being taught at home, all these other fears, you know, the political stuff that is dividing families. So much is going on in our other part of our life. I think that the leaders that say, I recognize that my employees have one life and I have one life. It's not a personal and a professional life. I have one life. And bringing the full self to work are going to be those leaders that... um, will see the best results from their teams. Mm-hmm. Well, I only have, we only have a few minutes left, but I want to make sure that we, um, that you have a chance to share any closing thoughts and maybe any call to action. So maybe <sighs> any other words of wisdom. This has been really enlightening for me. Um, but also want to make sure that you have a chance to share mm-hmm. um, anything else we should know about you and your, and your business and, and what's, Well, one of the things, I'm very global. Um, Obviously, I do a lot of work all over the world, but one of the things that I'm really excited about in the Sacramento region is um, bringing more coaching to this region, helping local, the local economy and local teams grow and develop and change and become the best they can for this world. Now that not everything has to be virtual, I'm, I like being with people. I can do all the coaching virtually and all of that, but I like being with people. So I'm excited about the opportunity to um, get in there and do some more one-on-one and team coaching with people in this region now that the world has opened up and we can do that. So that's one. And then to re- you have a website too. Is it Noble mm-hmm. Adventures? NobleAdventures.com, yeah. Okay. And all my coaching is on that as well. I'm a Marshall Goldsmith Stakeholder Center Coaching our coach certification. So that means I involve all the stakeholders in that. Um, But that's all on there. And then we have an upcoming trip going to Costa Rica. um, Mm -hmm. And our project is working on climate change and reforestation. We're going to shepherd some sea turtles as they come in and lay their eggs for the year. Hopefully, if they show up at the Costa Rica, who wouldn't want to go to Costa Rica for a week? That's right. We're going to go do some volcanoes. I mean, it's, it's going to be an incredible experience. So we're really looking forward to that. Okay. So any just closing thoughts? So a lot of our uh, listeners are more entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Um, Any, any closing thoughts for them uh, around uh, being there at their very best? Oh, wow. They're on a journey, right? This is, it's a long and winding path, but boy, don't give up. And you know, I say that being somebody that said, I'm done. It's not never going to happen, but I really believe in divine timing and it just wasn't the right time. Mm -hmm. And now the world is opening up. The world's much more global. I think that the time is now. So just if you really believe in your dream, just to hang in there and and it will happen, but you got to do the hard work. There's nothing harder. Yeah. I love that. Don't give up. I yeah. People, you don't, I don't hear that kind of talk mm. as much as I would like to have because I, I really think anything is possible if you don't, if you just stay with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you might have to pivot a little bit, but don't give up. So, don't give up. So huge in terms mm-hmm. of philosophy mm-hmm. and winning. So Christina Dyer, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to knowing you better. And, uh, you know, I'm running around in these entrepreneurial circles. And so I'm, I'm sure we are going to be uh, having a chance to get to know each other better. Thank you for the opportunity. You bet. Yep. Welcome back to the Mark Haney Show. And yes, uh, entrepreneurship is an adventure. It is not for the faint of heart. It is not for uh, people that are halfway committed. It is for people that all are all in. And I think Christina talked about people who are really uh, wanting to make a difference and you can there's different ways to learn you got to put yourself in these positions to win and some of the times it's around it's about being around other people that uh may be similar may be different but have some of the core values and um and that's really what it's about at the growth factory as well is about core values figuring out how our values align with our founders um, are we partner with the most committed, the most humble, the most authentic founders in the region that are also trying to figure out a way to change the world. So if you have interest uh, in being a part of the Growth Factory, if you are a startup, our deadlines for investment is uh, it's coming up pretty soon for the next cohort. So uh, you can find us at growthfactory.us. 
You can hit me up on social media at the Mark Haney. But to all you out there that are looking to build a business, working to to do something special with your life, looking to change the world through entrepreneurship, I want to know you. And I salute you. And here at the Growth Factory and the Haney Biz, you can count on one thing. We're never above you. Never, we're never below you. We're always by your side. Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the, in the box below. And if you have a, a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.